recent blog post, George R. R. Martin has announced that the Nine Voyages of Callers Valarian spin-off show, which would see us follow a young sea snake during his famous Nine Voyages around the world, was now no longer a live-action project, but has been changed to animation. The concept of the show follows a young Callus Valarian, the sea snake, in his youth on his famous nine voyages around the world that made his name and made House Valarian among the richest in the realm and a true power in Westeros during the build-up to the Dance of the Dragons, and thus House of the Dragon. This move from live action to animation has caught quite a few fans out, and in truth, I didn't see something like this coming. Looking around social media and my own comment section, it really seems to have divided people somewhat. While some are of course happy with this choice, there are those who fear that this move signals a move away from live action A Song of Ice and Fire spin-offs. In this video, I want to take a look at this question and break down why in this specific case of the Sea Snake spin-off, moving from live action makes a lot of sense and how this might affect future spin-off plans. Now the Sea Snake project was officially announced before House of the Dragon even aired on March 9th, 2022. It's been created and written by Bruno Heller, which is what really excited me about this project, even if I was skeptical about the concept and the idea. Heller's writing credits speak for themselves with all-time great shows such as HBO's Rome. Having Heller at the helm of an A Song of Ice and Fire project seems like a perfect match. The writing characterization on Rome was mostly fantastic, and the high level of production, I believe even to this day, has not been matched. The sets, the costumes, and the cinematography, all of this indicates that while a good writer, Hella can pick a crew who can do the job well. The big issue with the season X spin-off from the get-go was it has two fundamental issues. First, when the project was announced prior to the release of House of the Dragon, we had no idea if House of the Dragon would be a success, given the damage Game of Thrones Season 8 had done to the brand as a whole and wider audience opinions of it. Building on that, if fans would even connect enough with Callus Valarian in House of the Dragon to care about a spin-off centred around his backstory, it seemed a bit odd to me given the numerous other spin-offs in development I think stood a better chance of doing well and would grab fan attention such as Duncan Egg and Egon's Conquest that something such as The Nine Voyages was even being considered at this stage. But then again, when we look at the other spin-offs that we know were in development such as the Golden Empire and Doom of Illyria, I guess the Sea Snake's Nine Voyages would have really been that surprising. But the element of this that really grabbed my attention was the idea of seeing the Nine Voyages of Corlys come to life, the opportunity it offers to really add to the world building of the TV show universe. These voyages would allow us to see parts of the world of A Song of Ice and Fire that we've never even seen in the book, let alone on screen. Places like Yi Ti, and the Isle of Lang, and of course, a shy by the shadow, almost as far east as the maps we have show. A city that while we have never been there in the books or shows, has its presence lingering in the story, casting its shadow. I feel a show such as this would expand the TV universe in the same way books such as The World of Ice and Fire did. While we know some of the information and lore about many of these places the Sea Snake visited, there would be a lot of room for the show to really expand upon them, and show the viewer things we've never seen before. The idea of one or two of these voyages being shown a season has the benefit of keeping the show feeling fresh and evolving in a natural way, but in that also lies the heart of the issue we have when we're talking about the show in a live action format, and something I believe drastically limited the scope of Game of Thrones, how much of the wider world and story made it onto screen, and that is budget. The budget for a live action sea snake show would be absolutely astronomical and not just from a practical filmmaking perspective with how the story would be evolving with a new voyage, new locations every few episodes means you would rapidly have to create new sets, costumes and cast new actors from key parts to extras. Part of what keeps the costs down in production is the reuse of assets and getting the most use out of every aspect of production. For example, while the huge sets seem in Game of Thrones such as the throne room and the wall cost a huge amount of money to maintain and build. The amount of use these shows had of them offsets that cost. The same goes for casting. If you pay attention to extras or very minor speaking roles in a lot of TV shows, it will often be the same people popping up playing the same character as it's cheaper for the production to do this than hire new actors every episode. In some shows I have watched, this idea and concept led to some funny inside jokes with some of these minor roles and extras being on the show for 
various seasons. Shows like Community spring to mind, and I recall back in the day, Chuck did this a lot too. But the point is, changing everything out like this every few episodes is poor resource management and ultimately expensive. This also leads into the other issue with the fundamental concept of the show. Some of the places Corliss visits, such as Ashai and Yeeti, would be extremely costly to produce, both in terms of the CGI budget, the set budget, and the sheer scale of these places. And then also factoring in, each of these places would also need unique casting and costume soundtrack. They would ultimately be like nothing we'd ever seen either on Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. It would cost a lot of money to do this well, and to do it right more importantly. When you then also factor in, callers would not be in one place for too long. You're spending a lot of time and money for very little return in the long term. Animation would solve many of these issues in a more cost effective manner and truly allow the show to have the scale the world of ice and fire has in the books and something live action shows have lacked to this point for obvious practical reasons. It would allow them to truly build a fleshed out Ashai, which is something I have wanted to see since I read about it for the first time. While I would have preferred live action, the benefit of animation cannot be ignored. I've always championed the idea that should Game of Thrones ever be remade, it should be as an animation as it truly is the only way to create the scale of wonder of a world of A Song of Ice and Fire and truly bring George's world and work to life. I think much of this really will depend on the style of animation HBO uses. For example, some forms of animation really fit a source material over others. A great example of this is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. It's one of the best animation projects of something like a live action or video game adaption I've seen in a long time. The writing was phenomenal and the anime style really suited the dystopian cyberpunk world and truly felt like a natural extension and part of the game. Another animated project I enjoyed was in fact the Netflix's Witcher animated project Nightmare of the Wolf. While the writing on the Nightmare of the Wolf was not quite as good as the likes of Edge Runners, the animation in itself was great to watch and I feel the animation style used really did add scale to the world and an element of grittiness and darkness and ultimately in a lot of ways it felt a lot more like the books than the TV show has. In fact I have argued Nightmare of the Wolf is generally better than season 2 and 3 of the Witcher live action show. So the lesson here is the style of animation they choose to go with will really be important to how well the world and the story translates to screen. And ultimately, until we know more about the direction the project is heading in, I'm going to reserve judgement. But on the whole, I am hopeful about this new direction. But what I want to know is how you guys feel about this move from live action to animation. Let me know in the comments. Thank you.